Good morning, Hawks. Coach here with another adventure on this bright and shining morning. I am here between Berea and Richmond. I'm here with Mr. Lawrence Bailey, and he's a special uh, person to a couple Hawks at Shannon Johnson. He is the grandfather of Jackson and Lila Bailey um, that go to Shannon Johnson with us. And we are here today because he is a beekeeper. He is gonna to talk to us about raising bees. Um, we were at the Richmond Center a couple weeks ago, the Nutrition Center, and we talked about local food and local products. So we are here today with Mr. Bailey to learn about beekeeping and how he collects honey. So Mr. Bailey, tell us a little bit about what we're gonna to do today. Well, thank you, Mr. Hindley. It, uh, it's a pleasure to be able to share with kids what I do. And you asked me earlier this morning how I got started. Well, my father, uh, Force Bailey, He's, uh, he had started out with bees and he started out with a, something like this, a big, it was a log, a log, a tree, and inside was hollow, and they would put cross pieces in it, and he started out with the honey like that, and then they went to this process here. So I, I've started years ago uh, working with bees, just on a small scale, and uh, so what, if you're uh, interested in beekeeping, you may ask the question, who can keep bees? So I would say anybody from 12 years old and older can keep bees. Uh, some, of the some of the things that you need, first of all, you need a colony of bees. And you can order these bees by mail, or you were talking about local things, it's the best to get your bees locally because if they're raised in Kentucky, they're used to the climate in Kentucky. Okay. So we need a colony of bees. And uh, a colony of bees, you can get them in, in uh, three pounds or six pounds. Now, if you buy bees locally, there's a gentleman by the name of Sherman Sparks down in Gary County that raises bees. He has about 25 or more colonies. And there's a guy that's uh, down right out of uh, Berea on Highway 21 going toward Paint Lick, Bart Bowman, and Bart's got about 60 hives. Uh, he's got a, a big process. Well, Hawks, we'll come along a little bit today and we'll learn more about these colonies and the beehives and some of the things that we put them in. So come along for the ride. Okay, Hawks, we've talked a little bit with Mr. Bailey about you know, what you need to have as far as you need some bees. And he talked about several individuals here local in Kentucky that you can get those. So now we're gonna talk about if you decide to order some bees or have some bees, raise them here local, some things that you may need. So Mr. Bailey's gonna walk us through some of the utensils and different things that you might need to be a beekeeper. As I was saying, Hawks, uh, if you get bees, you get, uh, in one pound of bees, there are three to 4,000 bees. If you get two pound of bees, there's about 7,000 bees. A lot of bees. And if you get three pound of bees, it's about 10,000 bees. Next of all, you wanna get started. What you need is you need a hat and a veil. And then you can get them least expensive to very expensive. And you put this on and you wanna make it sure it's secure so they don't get around you. So you need, need a veil and a hat. You definitely need gloves. You need a hive tool. Very important, if you don't have this, you're in bad shape. You need a smoker. The smoke that comes out of this, I take pine needles and light them with a lighter. Open this up and stick them down in there and then you get smoke and it's natural. And that helps to calm the bees. You need a bee brush, and you need some things like tongs, and you grab, uh, what you do with this is you reach down in the box and you'll pull out your frame of honey. And that's where they store the honey at, is in the frame? That's where they store the honey in the frame. So. Uh, these are some of the things you, that you need to get started. Now, you mentioned the gloves and the hat. Why would you need gloves and a hat? If you don't have the gloves and the hat, then there's a very strong possibility that you're going to get stung, okay. and it's not pleasant. Um, like he's mentioned here, Hawks, you know, you need this protective equipment, the hat and the gloves, to keep you from getting stung. And anytime we do these adventures, Coach always talks to you about safety. 
Um, even with beekeeping, just like when coach was on the water, you know, I had the life jacket when I was paddle boarding on the kayaks. If you're doing beekeeping, you need to make sure you have that pr protective equipment to keep you from get you stung. And you always need that adult to supervise you. Since you guys are children, you need to make sure that you have somebody that can supervise you and knows what's going on. So we'll, we'll continue on here with Mr. Bailey and learn some more about beekeeping. Okay, Hawks, we've talked about some different safety equipment and some different things that you would need to be a beekeeper. Um, now we're going to talk about, you know, Mr. Bailey, he mentioned when you get those bees, whether you get 2,000, 5,000, 7,000, there's different size hives. So he's going to talk to you a little bit about what is here behind us, these white boxes, and kind of how you store the bees, where you keep the bees, and then maybe later on we'll actually go look at one of Mr. Bailey's beehives that he has set up here. Okay, uh, Mr. Hindley, what we... What, if you, when you start beekeeping, we had some of the basic essentials you need to get started, but these you've got to have your boxes, and there's, I use three different sizes. This is called your brood chamber. This is where you start out. And in your brood chamber, Mr. Hunley, if you'll help me, this is your base. And bees go in here, in and out here. And Mr. Hunley's gonna sit the base down and when you buy your bees, ever how many you get to start with, you put them in your brood box. And in your brood box, you have these frames. Now this is a wax foundation. And what Mr. Hindley has here, this, this is a wax foundation that you can buy for a brood chamber. Now this one here, now this is a plastic foundation. And what you do, you can find wax, and this is wax from bees. You melt this wax, and you can take a little paint roller. The man that I told you a while ago did this for me, Bart Bowman, and uh, he has a daughter that's in the fifth or sixth, fifth grade, or no, she'll be at, at Foley this year, maybe. And uh, he helps, she helps with the bees. And he rolls this wax on, and the bees pull this wax out, and when they pull it out, They make it look like that right there. And then these have these little cells. So you have a brood chamber, and then you have a medium frame. This is a medium frame box. And this one here is a small. So large, medium, and small. And what do the bees actually do with the, the chambers? Okay, in each one of these chambers, you have the queen cell, and it's a hexagon, so it's six-sided. They're perfect. The bees make them perfectly. And in the brood chamber, in these cells, you have uh, different types of bees. And uh, we'll discuss that here in just a few minutes. We've learned some of the utensils, some of the safety things that we need. We've learned about the different size boxes you may need, depending on how many bees you have. But now, I would like to know, Mr. Bailey, um, what what do the bees do and, and is there different types of bees um, a little bit more about you know what they do in the boxes and kind of the process of starting to get honey when you get your bees it's the best to get them locally and uh, there's a uh, I think it's called a nuke and it's five frames and if you buy them locally you get them from let's say Mr. Sparks or Mr. Bowman and you get these bees and there's five frames and they're already started and you have queens, you have which is the female, she takes care of the colony. She is the head lady of the colony. Okay. And the drones are the males, and they're the daddy of the colony. And then you have your workers, which you know, most of your bees consist of workers, thousands of them. And your queen will lay an egg. And she lays an egg in these cells down in the brood chamber. When she lays that egg, it looks like a little horseshoe. And in three days after she lays that egg, it'll hatch. And the bees, the worker bees, have packed enough food in that cell for that, for that bee. And in about 21 days, a worker bee will hatch out. In 16 days, a queen bee can hatch out. And in 24 days, the drone, the daddy bee, can hatch out. So she had, and then they seal it up until when she lays the egg and then all the food supply in there. And then when it gets a certain size, they will cap it over and it will be a little cocoon. So you have your egg, 
then your larva, then your pupa, and then your adult. And once you have the colony, then they get this full of honey and brood or brood, which is your little your little bees. And you put another one of these on here. And after you do that, then you can put, you have two of these, and then you can put a medium super on here. But pick that back up, Mr. Hunter. Okay. So we can think we've got two, two brood chambers, and then we put a thing called a queen excluder. A queen excluder means we want to keep the bees out of this part here, because you're going to get your honey from this. Once you establish your colony, then you have your supers. These are called supers, so you can have a medium. You can put a small, whatever size you want. Now, this box here full of honey, if you were using it for honey, would be about 80 pounds. Your medium would be about 50 pounds. And your small box would be about 40 pounds. It's a lot of honey. A lot of honey. And so if you're working them, you got to think, how much am I able to lift of what size, if you want the medium or if you want the small. Okay. So in, in you see hawks, this is kind of now what your, your your bee colony would look like. And in just a few minutes, we'll go to take a look at one that's set up and established with actual bees in it. Now we're going to talk about how do you get the honey from the box into you know the store that we may get it from or into your cabinet at home. Okay, Mr. Hunley, next what we do is once the bees have made the honey in the spring, and what we like is we like white white clover honey if at all possible. This here is an extractor. And this is a two frame extractor at the time that my wife got it for me. Uh, she bought it from a gentleman in Berea, or out of Berea, his name was Silas King. And uh, it holds two frames at a time. So what you've got to do is you take, take your frame out with honey and you've got to, to decap it. You've got to take the capping off and you open up your extractor and you stick it down in there and you've got to stick two. You put one in one corner and one in another corner. And then you've got to start cranking. And you turn the crank and it slings the honey out onto the wall and it comes down here to the spout. It runs down the wall and then you have this bucket and you let it out in this bucket and it's a little bucket that has a spout on it. And what I have, Mr. Honley, is I have these, these cloths. You can get them. I got these at Sherwin-Williams, a paint company. They strain paint and you put it over that white bucket and that strains the honey. If it's got any comb or little parts of bees or anything, it strains it out and then can set it up on the table or a lot, uh, an area high enough and put it in jars. For instance, a quart, a quart jar. This is what you're looking for. Golden, liquid gold, honey. And if you buy one of these now, if you buy one from Mr. Sparks, that's going to cost you about $25. And before we was talking about bees, if you buy bees, and you buy five frames of bees that started, you're gonna pay $175 to $180 to start out with maybe three pounds of bees. So it's, it's kind of expensive. So you can get a quart of honey or about a pint of honey, or you can put it in little honey bears. I like to put it in this and give it to people. And Mr. Honley, for you being here today, I'm giving you this little bear. Well, thank you. This I little honey that. bear. I appreciate that. And a lot of people sell it for profit. There's a gentleman over in Gary County. He has probably maybe anywhere from 400 to 1,000 hives of bees. Oh my goodness. And he takes his bees, he sends them by plane maybe to California to pollinate the almond groves. The honey is not good with almonds but he sends them out there and pollinates the groves out there. And then he takes a tractor trailer truck and he takes them sometimes to Florida and he pollinates the orange groves in Florida and he can get the honey from that. 
but some people they they use it for a business they can get uh, make lots of lots of money but for me it's just a hobby and usually I don't sell my honey I just give it to people well, good deal. Well, I appreciate that all right Hawks we'll continue on learning some more about bees we're here with mr. Bailey and on the back part of his property here he has a, a shed that he has built here and as you can see behind us he has um, set up the beehives and he has four of them here mr. Bailey how many bees would you estimate that you have here on your property there could be about close to 40,000 30 to 40,000 maybe 10,000 or more in each colony and uh, uh, so I just looked in them the other day so what you want to do is you want to put your your veil on before you start and tie it off so the bees won't go up up in your in your veil well you want this down real good so the bees won't get in your veil and it's the best to put uh, shoe strings or rubber bands around the bottoms of your pants so they don't crawl up your uh, pants leg so this is all that protective equipment that he talked about so if he were say he were going to open a box and maybe either check on the bees or or start the process of getting frames. the frames so he would take the frames out at that point so he would have to have all this protective gear on because as you know bees uh, have a tendency to sting us because that's their way of protecting themselves now mr honey these bees the they're very protective. This morning it's kind of cool. The temperature was 48. They don't fly as well early of the morning. And I told you about the bees earlier. You have your queen, your drone, and your worker. And the drone don't have a stinger. The queen has a stinger and she can repeatedly sting. But the, the worker bees, they have a stinger that has a barb on it like a fish hook. It's got a little barb on it and when they sting you and a larger animal they leave that stinger in their skin and they pull it out and then they die yeah and a worker bee only lives about six weeks mm. and then they die and a queen can lay anywhere from a thousand to two thousand eggs a day and so the worker she's got to keep them coming on so if she's got to have room to lay that many eggs a day but if you wanted to take you wanted to take this off you would take I keep those that's weights to hold this down and you've got to have your hive tool and you pop that up and when you pop it up you got to be real slow cause bees they get really concerned and you can see in the top here you can see the bees they're working around there they're coming up they if you start bothering them they get kind of upset. Coach is going to step back a little bit here because I don't have the protective gear on that Mr. Bailey does, and I can see quite a few of them bees coming out so, the bottom. So the bottom, you can see they're they're getting upset because somebody's coming in their territory, and so the worker bees, you have them, uh, some of them here, they help to protect. So if there's uh, uh, bumblebees come around or wasps and they try to get in there, then they can sting them. So you've got, you've got to be very careful when you work with them. So there you have it. We've spent some time with Mr. Bailey today. I want to personally thank Mr. Bailey for letting us come out today. And when we went to the Richmond Nutrition Center, and we talked about Kentucky Proud products. Now, like Mr. Bailey said a while ago, he gives most of his honey away, but there is people here in the state of Kentucky that use it for profit. If they raise the bees and the honey here, they could sell it as a Kentucky Proud product as long as they were licensed and had the certain certificates and things that they would need. But I hope that you've learned a little bit about the bees today, the beehives that they live in, some of the different tools and protective gear and equipment that you would um, need to get started with this. And these are local bees here. The honey would have some um, nutrients for you, for your body. It would be good for you. And some people take it for their allergies because the bees pollinate different flowers. And Mr. Bailey, thank you. If our hawks wanted to get started into beekeeping, is there a club or a group that they could meet with and maybe learn a little bit more about it before they went out to start buying some of the bees? Yes, sir. I belong to the Madison County uh, Beekeepers Association. If you're interested, you can go online to the Madison County Beekeepers Association and uh, Ken Kessler, Dr. Ken Kessler is our president. Uh, we meet on the fourth 
uh, Monday, usually the fourth Monday at six o'clock at the Madison County Extension Agent, and use this from a six to seven or a little longer, and then uh, whatever is the special thing that they talk about the night, they can go from eight to eight thirty, and uh, and you can get started, and you can just come and observe. And another thing, uh, Mr. Honley, that I want: why are bees important? Students. Don't kill a bee. If it's in the yard, you look at it, you don't want to kill a bee. The reason being, if we didn't have honeybees, Mr. Hunley, approximately four years, if we didn't have honeybees or bees, period, to pollinate the flowers and to help to make honey, and, and there's different uses for honey and the wax, and things like that. In four years, man would die off, would start to die off in four years if we did not have bees to pollinate flowers and uh, supply our food. The bees are out in the field gathering their pollen and stuff and nectar, then they usually, they won't sting you. Okay. Because they're away from their territory. But as you've seen a while ago, when you start messing with them yep. here, they're very protective. Thank right. you again, Mr. Thank Hyman. you, good sir. Well, thank you, Mr. Bailey and Hawks. Thank you, Mr. Hyman. Um, you've learned the importance of bees, not only for making honey that we eat, but also um, for the state of Kentucky here where we live the flowers and the trees wouldn't pollinate and wouldn't be able to grow if we didn't have them So like you said, you know be mindful of them They will sting you so if you do see a hive or something Maybe alert your parents or somebody and they can get somebody to come to take care of the hive if it's on your property and you don't want it there um, But thank you and I appreciate it and see you Hawk